Hello again, everybody. Zachatech is here with the attack line for Wednesday, March 27th, 2013. I got a haircut today. That's why I was out a little late today. That's why I decided I could come in with you a little late today. But let's kick off the attack line today with the billboard number ones. Huge first week sales for Justin Timberlake and his album, The 2020 Experience. Despite the fact that Suit and Tie has not been an outstanding radio hit, as big as everyone thought it was going to be, the album did well. First week sales, highest of Justin's career. And his last album, Future Sex Love Songs, debuted number one with 600,000. His new album, 2020 Experience, debuted with 968,000 copies, making it the biggest album first week sales of the year and third biggest of all time among male artists. First biggest sales for male artists in about four or five years. Of course, JT kicking off Bon Jovi. Now, of course, JT would have to contend with Lil Wayne next week. Because Lil Wayne, who has sold a million, or at least close to a million with his last two albums, will debut next week with I Am Not A Human Being 2, a very highly anticipated album. Already getting some critical slams over lack of Wayne himself more collabs. So with JT new number one single uh, album, we do have yes a new number one single. Yes, at last after five weeks, Hall of Shit got kicked off. When I said new number one, how about new old number one? The song that Hall of Shit actually kicked off to be number one single is back at number one after being stuck at number two for the last couple weeks and getting momentum more on radio than YouTube views. Thrift Shop, Macklemore, back at number one. After a few weeks stuck at number two, just as his new song, Can't Hold Us, is heating up the charts. So there you go. Thrift Shop, back at number one single, new number one single, new number one album, Justin Timberlake, with of course, 2020 Experience, making it kicked off by Little Wayne next week. Now, on with new single news, on a single lady, of course, referring to the former Miss Justin Bieber, Selena Gomez. Now, Selena had a good weekend, kind of. Uh, this past weekend winning a Kids' Choice Award for the final time for her TV show, Wizards of Waverly Place. Decent showing for a new movie, Spring Breakers. Despite the controversial material of the film, it debuted pretty good with its first week nationwide. But now Selena's back to her other love besides movies and TV, music. It's been two years since Selena's last album, When the Sun, when the sun Goes Down, with the cause to hit singles. Who says, and love you like a love song. Well, Selena released the cover art for a new single today called Come and Get It. No, it's not a bad thing to cover. She's too young to know that song. But it's a different Come and Get It. She released a single cover today. Oh, in a weird outfit. Uh, the single will be released itself on iTunes and radio on April the 8th. And Selena will be all over TV promoting it, including making its first public performance of the song. On April 14th at the MTV Movie Awards. Yep, Selena is the first announced performer for that on April 14th to be hosted by Webber Wilson. Because that's, and of course, not only was Selena be on the uh, v uh, Movie Awards, she'll also be on Ellen and other TV appearances. No more on when the new album's coming out, but we all know the single's coming out very, very soon, April 8th. I think it's like one at a time. Avril Lavigne releases her new single. So a lot of singles coming out in April. So there you go. Selena Gomez, new single. Come and get it. Coming out April the 8th. And performing it on the Movie Awards. MTV Movie Awards, April 14th. Now, I'm with some tour news and a festival news. Uh, first, the tour news. FOB, Fall Boy, back in the spotlight again with their upcoming album, Save Rock and Roll, which is ironically coming out April the 9th. The same week as Selena's album, it's a single. I think April 9th or April 2nd. Of course, offering it for 8 bucks right now on iTunes with the single, My Songs Know What You Did in the Dark. Kind of heating up radio, but not as much as they did back when they were relevant. Although, despite my statement, they're still relevant to a lot of people. Of course, with MCR recently broken up, as I mentioned on Monday's attack line, FOB is the only emo goth thing of the 2000s live standard that's relevant. Because FOB has announced already a winter spring theater tour, which is selling out the Fillmore. But today they announced a U.S. arena tour for the fall, which will include a stop here in Michigan at Detroit at the Palace of Auburn Hills. Tickets go on sale next week. Because FOB 
back to Relevantville with, of course, the announcement of their U.S. Arena Tour. Of course, like I said, they're going on a spring tour of theaters, including the Fillmore in Detroit, which is sold out. They're already selling out theaters all across the nation, and now they're going to sell out, or at least try to sell out arenas again. You know, all kick off September 5th at Mohegan Sun. They'll zip zag across the country, including Barclays Center in Brooklyn, the Palace, of course. They're even going to do uh, Cleveland, Ohio, the World Science Center, uh, new, uh, L newly LA shows to do, like Honda Center and stuff. Uh, like I said, tickets go on sale April 5th and 06 in select cities. And uh, I saw them in 06 during the very first arena tour. And they were good, you know. It was when Sugar was going down swinging was the hit at the time. So there you go. FOB, back with Arena Tour. Now, on with rumors finally being broken. After months and months of speculation, Glastonbury announced its lineup today, the big UK festival, and one of the biggest rumored headliners was the Rolling Stones. Although they were rumored to headline like Coachella, and that wasn't true. Glastonbury is true. Rolling Stones have confirmed that yes, they will be headlining Glastonbury in London this summer. Thus, furthering rumors of a possible U.S. Arena tour. I've been saying that last week that they, they're doing a U.S. Arena tour possibly in May and June, which will be announced in April. And now the rumors of that may go high with the fact they announced the very first performance of 2013. The rumor to Glastonbury is true. Rolling Stones will join an elite lineup at Glastonbury, which will take place on June 28th to the 30th. They'll be performing alongside Arctic Monkeys, Mumford & Sons, Dizzy Rascal, Kenny Rogers. Now, though you see that, Bill Stones and Kenny Rogers. Uh, Rita Ola, just to name a few people. Elvis Costello, Mary Bayer Weekend, The Smashing Pumpkins, Alt-J, Public, Im Public Image Limited, with uh, Johnny Watton, Johnny, whatever his name is. Uh, a Monsters and Men. Public Enemy! Dang it! I'm gonna see Public Enemy. I'm gonna see him. I said it last, uh, this past Monday, when I did the attack line when I met Flavor Flav over the weekend. So it's weird. Public Enemy and Stones on the same bill. I'd pay to see that. <laughs> I'd pay to see P.E. and stuff on the same bill. Also, Sheik is there. Uh... A lot of other names. Dinosaur Junior, Cat Palace, some alternative people. There's like eight stages. A lot of a lot of people. Too much to name here. Sinead O'Connor, Steve Rinwood, Katie Toonstall. A lot of names. A lot of bands. Huge lineup. Of course, to be all cap, caught, capped off by the Stones. That performance has been rumored for months. And now it's been confirmed. But like I said, with them finally confirming the Gloucesterberry show, that like I said, Amps up rumors of the U.S. Arena Tour. Make it be true. One rumor down, one to go. Please, Stones, announce the U.S. Tour and make a stop in Michigan, please. So there you go. Stones in Glastonbury. Now, of course, the Rolling Stones, all in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and Public Enemy, who I mentioned will also be at Glastonbury along with the Stones, is also going in the Hall of Fame on April 18th. One day, not only is the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame announced their inductors, some of the inductees for the WWE Hall of Fame was announced over the week on Monday and yesterday on internet and on WWE television. Uh, but let's get to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame first. Some performers and inductors have been announced for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame uh, to honor the Armand Arrogan recipients for non-performers, Lou Adler and Quincy Jones, two legendary producers. They'll be paying tribute by Usher, who will be performing on behalf of Quincy Jones, and uh, no, uh, no presenter, but uh, but also performing and presenting for Lou Adler, uh, Carol King. We performing on behalf of Lou Adler. Of course, Carol King was like a partner of Lou Adler, and Lou Adler produced a lot of a lot of the material. Another group that Lou Adler produced, Cheech and Chong, will be inducting Adler, and. Uh, also, when it comes to the performers, uh, Jerry Cantrell and Mike McGreedy, a Paul Jim and Allison Chance, respectfully, will be performing with Hart while they'll be inducted by Chris Cornell, uh, Shadow Garden, will be inducting them. Uh, performing for Randy Newman will be Jackson Brown and John Fogarty. Randy Newman will only be announced to be inducted by Don Henley. 
if Public Enemy would be honored, inducted by Spike Lee, of course, the director of Do the Right Thing, the movie that, of course, had Fight the Power in it, and Harry Belafonte. Don't know where he fits in. Of course, the other inductees were already announced. Inductors were already announced as John Mayer will induct Albert King. You know, before with Gary Clark Jr. to pay tribute to Albert King, Don Henley will induct Randy Newman, Christina Aguilera, and Jennifer Hudson will perform on behalf of Donna Summer. And Dave Grohl and Taylor Hawkins will be inducting Rush. Rush and P.E. all performing as well as Hart and Randy Newman. So there you go, inductors and performers. For the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction ceremony on April 18th, I think May 19th will be the television premiere of that induction ceremony on HBO. Now I mentioned now the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame announced some of their new inductors. The WWE Hall of Fame announced their inductors for their ceremony on April 7th. Now on Raw this past Monday, I forgot to mention this on my Raw review on Monday, that uh, on North. Arnold Schwarzenegger will be inducting Bruno San Martino. The good friends. So it makes kind of sense that Arnold, I think he was featured on a package for Bruno. So it's kind of weird to see Arnold induct them. Uh, inducting Mick Foley, I think everyone should have guessed. Jokingly making a video saying that Al Snow will be the one to induct them. Everyone knows Al Snow's in TNA. But hey, they, even if Mick was serious about Al Snow, which he wasn't, uh, Al Snow being in TNA, hey, they got Ric Flair to come last year when he was still in TNA, but perfectly so, Foley will be inducted by Harry Funk. Now, no one on who's going to induct the others, who's going to induct Donald Trump, who's going to induct Chris Stratus and Bob Backlund, and I'm trying to think who else, I think that's it, you know, Backlund, Bruno, Foley, Tr Booker T, we don't know who's inducting Booker T yet, as well. So we don't know if it's like Booker T, Trish, Bob, or Donald, but we'll probably find those out soon enough. So there you go, the first inductors for the WWE and Rock and Roll Hall of Fames. Now, on with TV news, uh, previews. Yes, after a month away, new modern failure tonight. Finally, new modern. But about, like I said, about a month, month since new modern. Cannot wait to see finally new modern episodes have been on a little bit of a break. And finally get to see new episodes of Modern. The last new episode of Modern was great. Great way to go out before the break. I'm trying to... It's been so long since that episode. I'm trying to remember what that episode was. The last... I think it was the one with that chick was getting married. Yeah, that was it. Yeah, that was it. Uh, when Sal came back. A character, we current character came back to get married. That was a, that was the best man episode. That was a very good episode with uh, Manny having a crush on the Manny, the nanny of uh, his new brother. You know, that was a great episode. That best man episode, the last episode he did. Cannot wait to see New Modern. And I think they may have a couple more weeks off before the finale and stuff. But they're gonna have three straight back to back episodes starting this week. Cannot wait to see New Modern finally after a month away. And also new today, Dunk. Dynasty. Yeah, Duck Dynasty's back on tonight. New episodes. Last week was funny. The episode of Cy and the Kids Place was kind of uh, weird, but hey, he won some money. Jack in that casino night for Duck Commander. Now, Duck Dynasty Season 4 is up in the air because Duck Dynasty's holding up the producers. They want more money. The Robinson boys have just said that they want $200,000 an episode. Use AD doesn't pay that much. For pro episode for the reality guys. But Duck Dynasty is one of the biggest shows. You know, the season premiere of season 3 was the biggest rating ever for Duck for a &E. So they better get a deal, and I know they will probably come up with a deal for Duck Dynasty for season 4 with them holding up because of disputes with money. Modern Family was holding up by contract dispute for their fourth season, and look what happened. Modern's still on. They got that dispute handled. Even the kids wanted more money. But with season four up in the air with money disputes, we can at least watch season three of Duck Dynasty tonight at ten on Haiti, and of course Modern back on at nine on ABC. ABC, uh, of course, check times for Mountain and Western. Uh, that is it for the Tech Lab for today. See you all later. Have a great night. With that in mind, you've all been attacked by the news from Zach. See you later. Yeah.